A Supreme Court judge in British Columbia has found that the father of a 14-year-old girl is guilty of family violence because he refused to accept his daughter's gender identity and continued to refer to her as she. Stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, pals and gals. Welcome to Heck Off Commie. My name is John Doyle, and today we're going to talk about parenting and the role of government within that context, provided that the role exists in the first place. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Where is the line for you personally where the government should and should not be able to interfere with the relationship between a parent and a child? Anyways, an order of protection was issued by Justice Francesca Mazzari that states that the father, who's referred to as Clark, will be arrested if he attempts to persuade his daughter, who is referred to in the document as Maxine, to abandon treatment for gender dysphoria, to refer to her her as a girl or use female pronouns when either addressing her directly or talking about her with other people or to go as far as to refer to her by her birth name if he does any of those he's subject to arrest the order states that the arrest can occur immediately and without warrants by a police officer who has reason to believe that he is in violation of said order Back in February, the Supreme Court of British Columbia ordered that Maxine undergo hormone treatments against the consent of her father, and as a result, this young girl has been regularly taking testosterone injections at a children's hospital in British Columbia. Apparently, when the girl was in seventh grade, her counselor encouraged her to identify as a boy. Then when she was 13, Dr. Brendan Hirsch at the children's hospital encouraged her to begin the injections, uh, hormone injections to enable her to gain a more masculine appearance. Like, all right. What's new? <laughs> just, just another day in the life. Totally normal. Nothing abnormal here. We've talked about this before. We've gone over the literature. To summarize a few common claims, the first one being that the reason transgender people are so depressed and so suicidal is because of how society treats them. So the percentage of transgender people that felt that being transgender has had no negative impact on their quality of life, and this is from the Williams Institute at UCLA, that still attempted suicide was 31%. 31%, almost one in three, and then based on the 2016 survey of national drug use and mental health, the percentage of the U.S. population that has made at least one suicide attempt is 0.5%, half a percent compared to 31% of transgender people. That's one in three compared to one in 200. Trans people that say that being trans has had no negative effect on their quality of life are that much more likely to attempt suicide. So clearly, there's something much bigger going on here that isn't just society being intolerant, because the rate at which they're attempting suicide is not comparable to anything that we've ever seen before, to my knowledge at least. And the second one, would be that hormone therapy can be used to successfully alleviate symptoms of gender dysphoria or gender identity disorder, whichever, D whichever DSM you prefer. And this is also not true. The data don't suggest this at all. It effectively does not change. And this perhaps is why the father of the young girl was so against hormone treatment in the first place, not only because it does irreversible damage to the child's development. And I already know, I already know what you're going to say. Um, it can be reversed if they stop taking them. It's like, that's misleading. There are virtually no published reports, even case studies, of adolescents withdrawing from puberty-suppressing drugs and then resuming the normal uh, puberty cycle typical for their sex. So not only is it damaging, it also fails to achieve its intended result. There's also a lot of research that shows that there's some evidence for decreased bone mineralization, uh, meaning an increased risk of bone fractures as young adults, potential increased risk of obesity and testicular cancer in boys and an unknown impact on psychological and cognitive development. But we can then from there dig into the research of adults that have taken blockers for various health reasons like prostate cancers, uh, for example. And then that research shows that there's a possibility of significant cognitive decline. Another research that we've done on adults shows that the risk of cross-sex hormones includes, but are not limited to, cardiac disease, high blood pressure, blood clots, strokes, diabetes, cancers. And additionally, we have tons of research that shows that people under the age of 21 have less capacity to assess risks. So given all this, is it really ethical to do this to them? They can't properly consent, right? And with this case in particular, the state consented for the father. The state usurped the father and consented for him. And one more thing. The American Psychological Association's Handbook of Sexuality and Psychology admits that 75 to 95 percent of prepubescent pre children who were distressed by their biological sex eventually outgrew that distress. Okay, and one more for the road. At least 72 percent of what influences transgenderism in kids is not nature, but rather nurture, what they're exposed to while growing up. And we know this from Dr. Milton Diamond in the largest adult transgender twin study conducted in 2013. I wonder if since the culture is now trying to normalize this disorder in the name of tolerance, I wonder if that's why in the UK, for example, the gender Identity Development Service has seen a 2,000% increase in referrals since 2009. Given all this information, I conclude that raising your child to be transgender is child abuse. I don't believe the state knows better than the parents what is good for a child, and I certainly don't believe that the state cares about the child more than the parents of the child. And this is where, of course, the low IQ individuals chime in. John, you claim that parents care about their kids, correct? But did you hear about that one time a parent killed their kid? It's like, okay. 
Anyways, kids cannot decide their own gender identity. They simply cannot. And the fact that the Canadian government would do this is just disgusting. It's horrifying. Remember the story uh, that was circulating a couple years ago? It said that Canada has passed legislation that would enable the state to take custody of your child if you didn't agree with his or her gender identity. And then BuzzFeed just comes out with this article just saying, um, nice try conservatives, but it's not true. And here we are now. A Canadian dad will be arrested if he refers to his daughter with the name that was printed on her birth certificate because he is committing family violence. Isn't this fun? Are we having fun yet? I tweeted out this recently. Hopefully you follow me on Twitter. Even though they've been hiding my tweets from people that follow me. That's why you have to have notifications turned on Twitter, YouTube as well. But I have a niece in fourth grade and she is being routinely sexually harassed by a transgender in her class. It is a girl that thinks she's a boy. It was brought to the attention of the school and then the parents of the girl threatened a lawsuit because discrimination, like, <laughs> good God, it's so hacked. You want another anecdote? I've got anecdotes for days, baby. Uh, my sister, she was 10, she thought she was a boy, cut her hair short, made my mom buy her clothes from the boys department. Guess what my dad did? He just hit her with a, no, you're a girl. And then she was like, hmm, all right. And now she's fine. Very dangerous cultural narrative that we're flirting with here. I respect this father tremendously for not capitulating to the militants. And if you allow your child to engage in a delusion that lowers their quality of life by almost every conceivable metric through irreversible damage, you're reprehensible and your ancestors are frowning upon you. Ahoy there! If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and leave it a comment. Also, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and share this with your friends, why don't you? Um, yeah. I had to get one. They were on sale. They were on sale because, uh, it really never became Mueller time, unfortunately. So, you know, it's whatever. But uh, thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America.